named ranges is a way that we can actually select a cell or a range of cells and give it an actual name. Normally we have the name box at the top left of your screen where right now I happen to be on G5 and the name box always tells you the name of your active cell. But what we want to do today is find out this great feature called naming the cell because of the fact that it's going to give you benefits like it's an absolute reference by default. So if you're familiar with using a dollar sign in your formulas to lock a cell down so that you can copy it, you don't have to do that if it's a named range. Um, another benefit of named ranges is going to be the fact that when you create a formula using a named range, the formula is easier to understand. Um, another benefit is, I could go on all day about just benefits of it, but another benefit is it's available in other worksheets. So I can use a named range anywhere within the workbook. And if I'm going to be creating a lot of formulas on the same range of cells, naming it makes it more efficient because I don't have to keep going back and selecting the ranges over and over again. So let me show you how to create a named range and how to use them in a formula. Starting out with the fact that I'm going to go to the cell G2. G2 has a 4% which is referring to a commission rate. I'm simply going to click on the cell I want to name so in this case, G2, I'm going to click in the name box and I'm going to physically type what I want to name this cell. So I'm going to name it commission rate. And the reason that I'm going to do this is I want it to be easier to use this in a formula. After I type the name, I just press enter. There are some rules available on your page one of your handout um, in regards to when you name a cell or a range of cells, when you name it, it can't have any spaces in the name. It's just like naming a table, naming a pivot table, using code, those types of things. Um, we can't have any names in it. So if you're going to create a macro and different things, you also cannot use a cell reference. And when we talk about a worksheet, we have over 16,000 columns going across. It goes over to XFD. We have 1,048,576 rows going down. So we can't name a cell the same as a cell reference. So those are kind of the, the basic rules. Big one, no spaces. But now that I named this cell, how do you use it? What am I going to do with it? I'm going to go to cell G5, and I'm going to create a formula using that commission rate. I'm going to start, of course, with my equal. I'm going to say I want to take my total sales and multiply it by commission rate. As soon as I start typing CO, of course, I get that list of all the functions that begin with those letters. Notice that the function names have a circle with the FX to the left, but a named range is going to have the squares with the blue. I'm going to double click on commission rate. Notice that it automatically selects cell G2. I'm going to control enter because if I press enter, I'm going to move down. Control enter keeps me on the cell that I was actively on so that I don't have to go back up. So now that I'm on that cell, I can see when I read the formula, the formula makes more sense. Instead of having G2 with dollar signs to make it an absolute reference, it's easier to understand the formula. And because the named range is an absolute reference, I can copy it down with my fill handle and every one of those formulas will be using commission rate. I'm going to do one more example. I'm going to go to cell G1. So on this worksheet, one more example. So on G1, I want to name this sales goal because I'm going to use it in a formula. So I'm on G1. I'm going to click again in the name box. I'm going to name it sales goal. I want to use it in a formula in column H. I'm going to do a formula that is going to use the function if. If is a very commonly used function. It's actually in the most common top 10, um, probably for me top five of most commonly used functions. If you haven't used it before, the arguments for this really is we want to evaluate something 
And whatever our criteria is that we're evaluating, it needs to have a true or a false answer. So what I'm gonna do with this is I wanna know if their total sales in column F is greater than or equal to the sales goal. If it's true, I wanna have the word yes. If it's false, I wanna have the word no. So what I'm gonna do is equal I, the letter I, I'm currently on the if, I'm gonna press my tab key because I'm on the function for if, otherwise I could double click on it. It's gonna bring up your screen tip, giving you the syntax of the entire formula, breaking apart each argument. It is on the logical test right now. But one of the things that, if you haven't done this before, what I want you to think about is, do I need help with this? Am I, am I sure what I'm supposed to do? If you're not sure, click FX. In your formula icons area underneath the ribbon, if you click the FX for insert function, it's going to open the function arguments window. I call it the helper window because it's going to help you build your formula, whatever your formula is. At the top left, it tells you the name of the function you're using. Your cursor is in the first field, or I should say argument, of the formula, and it gives you a description in the middle. If you still need additional help, you can actually go to help on this function at the bottom left, and it would take you to the internet website, Microsoft, and give you more information about doing this formula, give you examples and all kinds of information. But basically what I wanna do is I wanna take F5 and see if it is greater than or equal the sales goal. I'm gonna click G1. When I click G1, it automatically adds the sales goal name because it's a named cell. I'm going to go down to the value if true. So what do I want it to do if their total sales is greater than or equal to the sales goal? I want it to say yes. I'm going to press tab and go into the value if false, and I'm going to have it say no. But one of the things that I really like about this helper window is it's automatically putting commas to separate my arguments. It's also putting quotes around text that is in the formula. So yes and no will both have quotes. I'm gonna click OK or press Enter, and I automatically can see that the first person's met their goal. So their total sales is greater than or equal to the sales goal which is on G1. I can of course copy this down for the other employees because I'm using a named range, it's an absolute reference. So it will automatically copy it down for all of the other employees, which now I'm seeing there's only two people that did not qualify to meet their sales goal. But remember when I said named ranges can be used in other worksheets? Just so you could see an example of that, I'm gonna to go to the maps worksheet and let's say that I wanna create a formula using commission rate. I'm just gonna click on a blank cell as an example. And let's say that I wanna take 1000 and multiply it by the commission rate. Doesn't matter what type of a formula I'm doing, I can utilize a named range from anywhere. So if I double click on commission rate, I'm gonna do control enter. It automatically gives me the calculation of taking that percentage from the commission rate and multiplying it with that 1000. So it can be used anywhere within the workbook. And if I go to the name box and click on the drop down, you will see a list of your current named ranges. If I click commission rate, it's gonna jump me back to the cell that actually includes the commission rate. 